Hey, what's up, SAS Masters? My name's George, and today we're gonna check out Doc Down. This is going to be a review of the things I like and dislike about it. Now, what does it actually do? Well, it's basically, you upload a PDF. It could be a template for a certificate, a document for taxes, or just anything that you want to fill out automatically with the inputted fields. So once you upload that document, you create some fields that will automatically fill it in the document. It sounds kind of tricky, but it's actually pretty easy. And I have to hand it out to these guys because because the UI is really clean and there's no like weird settings or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward and you're going to see that in this video. So we're going to talk about what I like and dislike about it and let's jump over to the deal right now before we jump over to the dashboard. So let's head on over there. All right, this is the dock down deal that's going on right now and it's $99 for a lifetime deal. That means you pay once, use it forever and if you guys would like to support me, please consider using that link in the description. Now, first off, you see some document forms right here like a tax form for W9 and it kind of gets a little bit tricky but because you think it's only for US but no, it's just any document that you want to use, you can use it right here. Now, $99, I think it's a bit pricey but it's a really clean UI and I like how it's the flow works. So what do you get with that? Well, you get one professional account and you get unlimited document templates, unlimited workflows, and they have integrations with Slack, Gmail, and webhooks. So basically, there's a lot of flexibility there. Now, there's something I don't like about it, and I will talk about that with the webhooks. So let's jump over to Doc Down dashboard, and basically, this is it. And like I said, it's super clean. You got your documents right here. You got the workflows, history, and the account information. So I got one uploaded right here, but let's upload a brand new one. So basically, I'm going to upload a certificate right here. Let me grab that and I'm going to put it in here. It could be any document that you want that's in PDF format. It could be complex. It could be simple like this one and it could be multiple pages and it doesn't even matter, right? So let's open it right here and you get into the editor mode. So first off, you got five type of fields available right now. So there's text, numbers, checkbox, dates, and signature. I wish they had an image field because that could help out with, for example, with the signature. That could be a really helpful use. So for example, right now, if I wanted to add a signature for, you know what, I'm the one giving the certificate, so I'm the one giving the, the signature. So it's gonna be my signature. We're gonna call that. I'm gonna create the field, and since it's my signature, I can fill it out, right? So I'm just gonna say, this is my signature, and I can preview it here. Not sure. Oh, it'll we'll be it when we fill it out. Okay. Let's add the other signature available right here. So let's go there. And this one it's going to filled by the person. Oh, so um, I don't know. Person signature. All right. Let's create that field. And in this case, the source is going to be the user input. So he's the one who's going to fill it out. Next, we have the name right here. So let's put the name right there in the certificate. And like I said, it could be as complex or as simple as you like. So let's put in this box right here and we'll say this is the name. Create the field and we can change the name right here, the label of it. We can set a description for it. It could be the default text right here if we needed something to be default or maybe if it's like repetitive, you want to have the default text right there, but you could change it later on if you want. And you can change the data type. So the five fields that we have right there, we can change it over here. For example, it could be a text, email, oral, paragraph, or multiple choice. So change it from there. It could be required or hidden or static. Um, heads up, this is really cool. They also have conditional logic in this. So just like a form builder, they have conditional logic. And that's over here. I'll show you that in a bit. Select the type of font. So right now they only have three fonts, no custom font. So that's like a, a bummer. The, the font size, so for example, in this case, we'll, it's gonna be the heading, the main name, so we'll say around 30 in size, and it could be the overflow, so for example, if it's, it's too long, you can wrap it. The style, bold, italic, and centered, you have the alignment right here. Now, something that's not here, and I think they will add it because it's really basic, they have alignment for like up, centered, or down, but it's just like up and down, you know, vertical. They haven't added alignment for horizontal. So maybe you want centered, like for example, right here, I just want it to be dead center every single time. And they don't have that option there. They got these type of colors, no custom color right now. Um, minimum length, maximum length and position right there. So that's a field for that. We can add more fields, like for example, numbers, if I wanted to add this. And I mean, we're just grabbing this for demo purposes. Don't worry about how it actually looks right here. It's the number of fields right here. and. There's a checkbox that we can add. So for example, checkbox, I don't know, for pounds right here. 
obviously you would type something there but let's just say check box create that field and again we can make it required hidden or static all of that these are these right here are to help with conditional logic if you want okay let's preview this baby so check it out so let's preview this right here and we got the person signature let's put that there the name would be for example let's just say sas master right a number put two let's well, check box and submit and there we go so fill that out here obviously just work with the alignments there so you can fix that out the number is right there the check mark where we put the pound the signature that i put in the beginning that's from my input not from the user and the user input is on the right so that's basically that's how the editor works to preview it that way so that's pretty easy and straightforward to use um things that i dislike about it obviously is the first of all the alignment that's super crucial to have the center alignment because you don't know what's going to happen there um, you can drag and drop these. So for example, the signature, you would put it at the end, checkbox around here, name would be first, and that's how you align that, right? So you saw how we created that. Let's save it, and let's head on over to the workflow now. Um, if you had more pages, you just click on next one, and you work on the next page right here, okay? Let's go into the workflow, and let's create a brand new workflow. Now, something I really dislike right here is the trigger, okay? Trigger workflows is, for example, you tell it what to do. And the trigger is the beginning, okay? So what? why do I dislike this? The trigger is always started from the document. So the document I created that I set it to, for example, the certificate, that's the trigger it's going to use. I would like to have the trigger from an external source. So for example, a webhook. So let's just say I fill out a form somewhere else, I would like to trigger that and then go to the form. In this case, it starts off on the form. So let me just show you what it does. All right, so I selected the form that we're going to use. Who can access this form? We can say anyone who has this link right here, or we could change it to use a password-based authentication. A download PDF, PDF yes. Uh, fi file name, so we could say like, I don't know, um, cert test, and the title will just say test, test, and description test test um, something that they need to add right here also I think it's simple are the variables so if I wanted to add a variable from here I would be able to do that let me save this and this is just the beginning right so we have a website right here but basically all it's gonna do is if I fill it out I get the option to download it we haven't worked on the workflow so let's wait for that to load all right that's taking a bit it didn't take that long last time so let me refresh this hmm. maybe because I have oh it's not enabled I have to enable it okay let me add the next workflow so we can enable this okay so this is the trigger that's next so after the form has filled this is what's going to happen next okay and we have three options right now which are pretty decent you have the email option slack option and webhook and with webhook basically you can do anything you can take that information anywhere you want um, let's set this to the email one so in this case we can add the gmail email right here or we can use theirs by default now to use gmail you gotta verify it so in that sense they don't let you do spam with it okay and who is it gonna go to for example you can select a variable oh we haven't set an email variable right here but I'll just add my email right here for testing purposes you can CC to it there's a BCC, there's a subject, so in this case, we'll just say test video. And again, the variable, that's not there. The attachment, also not yet there. And they should add those variables where we can just select it. I bet you it's a simple bug, but it's, ob it's obviously the variables right there. And the message is gonna go, we can say test and so on and so forth. And again, the variable. So let's save this right here. And it's not letting me save it. Let me see what's going on here in the document. Oh, see, it didn't save this right here. So let's go back and select certificate. Um, who is this form from? Anyone from the link? Yes. I'll just put anything. Save it. Oh, field name again, save. And now we can enable it. Just go back to the email, see if we can get those variables now. The attachment. See, there's a variable that should be showing. Now it's showing there. And another thing I did is like is like, for example, 
Here's the variables that we have available to put right there. But in the description right here, we don't have the variables. But I checked it out. If I grab this variable for right, from right here and I paste it, it will work. So it's just a matter of them adding the variables where we can click on them and adding them. So let's save this now. Let's activate it. Let's go into the document trigger right here. This is the link that we get provided. Now there's no embedding right now. So you have to use that link and that's something I dislike. Plus you don't have a way to edit this form. So for example, if I wanted to change how this header looks, obviously I wrote that blah, 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 right? But there's no way to change that. So let's do the name, uh, fake signature, checkbox. And I don't remember what this one was. Oh, that's to clear it up and just a number right there and submit it. There's also the date submission. I didn't add it, right? So please wait while your document is ready to download. Okay. So I just created it and we can download it right here, save, open it and boom, there you go. That information that I put over there, it just added it right here. Now, like I said, this can be a really complex document where all that information will save you a lot of time. Instead of manually editing this and going into the right field of everything, just fill out the form and boom, just one after the other, one after the other. And since this is a workflow, I should get the email also. So let me open that email so you can view that. And here it is. This is a test email that I put test video and it's sent by the default email from theirs. So I can set my own. This could be a client email if you like. And this is the information that I put. And here's a variable that I put for the download. So if I click on it, I should be able to download it. I'm not doing it because this is the same, same document, but you can see the variable actually worked in the description, but I wasn't able to get that option here. Let me go about back over here. So this is the one I put, but it didn't tell me where those variables are. It's not even here. Oh, here it is. No, it's grabbing it from there. It should be a simple way to do it. Just like this, clicking on it and adding it should be as simple as that. And basically that's how the workflow goes. And you can go way more complex with webhooks. Basically every data sent somewhere else. If you want to send it to a CRM, if you want to send it to it's just wow, webhook is unlimited ideas. Then we have the history available right here of what's going on. So if someone filled it out, you can view it right here. In this case, see, we got a little bug right there, but here's the ID, the information for it and the email. And basically that's something I, I like about it is the UI. It's super clean and super simple to use. You got documents and workflows and none of the, the nonsense. Let me show you really quickly one last thing, which are the conditional logic. Um, remember we click on, let's just say the pounds, right? Let me show you a preview. Here's the checkbox for pounds. Okay. Now, if I use conditional logic, let's go back to the editor. Let's just say name conditional logic. I'm going to add a conditional logic and let's just say I want to, oh wait, oh, you, I'll do it in the other one. Delete it. Number. A number there got that there conditional logic add a conditional logic i'm going to hide this field and i'm going to say if all add a rule if the name or something else could be the name so right if the name is empty if it's not empty so in this case also like not empty but if it contains it begins with for example if it has a number one then hide the other field in this case we'll just say if it's not empty preview it and Remember, here's the checkbox. And if I fill something in the name, it removed the other one. Oh, it's the number one I've selected. So there we go. Basically, that was made with conditional logic and you can go way more complex with it, like hide and show fields and do other stuff depending on what you need. So basically that is doc down. And like I said before, it's a lifetime deal. It's $99. Um, I wish it was at a better, like a better price point. I would say a sweet spot for this one is around $59, but it's 99. If it works for you, then fantastic, right? It's a good deal for it because you have no limitations on document templates or workflows. But basically that is how, well, my name doc down works. My name's George. This is SAS master. And if you guys would like to support me, please consider using that link in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.